Hello and welcome back to episode 4 of LDPD. Well, what a break it has been. Christmas came and went and it just wasn't the same this year. Is it even really Christmas if you don't hear your granddad say something racist, your dad say something sexist, and your brother tell you every conspiracy theory they found about COVID on the internet? To be honest, I'm quite happy that I uh, spent Christmas on my own because if I have to go through one more conversation about how if Die Hard is a Christmas film or not, fuck me. Can we not think of anything more original? What are we going to discuss next? Whether Jaffa cakes are fucking cakes or biscuits? What about pineapple on pizzas? What do you think, guys? Let's have a 40-minute discussion. Fuck off. If anybody comes up to me with those sort of conversations, I always say the same thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't discuss that now. I'm just busy watching paint dry. And then I've got to nip out to the back garden to watch my fucking grass grow. It's far more thrilling than the original content you're coming up with. I don't know why people keep posing it like it's a funny sort of observational humour. Oh, guys, it's on Christmas. It's based around Christmas. It's definitely a Christmas film. Yeah, I'm bored too. Let's just eat the food, break the crackers, and just fucking go home, shall we? <laughs> I'm so miserable when it comes to Christmas, and I don't really care. Um, I have no Christmas decorations in my house. Some people think that's an absolute sin, but what am I going to do? Just remind me of the Christmas spirit that I don't fucking have? I don't need that. Plus, this is a multicultural household. It doesn't have to be Christmas. It could be anything. Come into my house on the 25th of December. It could be Hanukkah. It could be Kwanzaa. It could be... A baptism, it can... <laughs> just random naked children being dipped into water. <laughs> I cater for all events. I tell you what, I did do though. I watched The Irishman. Uh, I, I say I watched The Irishman. I endured The Irishman. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's like a three and a half hour film. Do you know? In the span of watching that film, I was able to cook a pizza. I replied to texts from friends. I replied to work emails. And I masturbated. And I'm not particularly proud of that last one. It wasn't related to The Irishman. It's just simply because... I, I don't know how to finish that sentence. <laughs> it's because I'm 28. I'm like, guy, what do, you, uh, what do you want? What do you want from me, huh? Three and a half hours and I hadn't touched myself. I needed to do something. Oh, Jesus. But it's the new year now. It's the new... New year, new me. Oh, God. Which means we've got to suffer for all of those people. Ah, oh, sure. You'll be able to upload a couple of selfies to your Instagram about how you changed your life for the better. Why do I need to know about that? I don't need to see a plate full of salad. Oh, speaking of which, I joined, this is related, I joined TikTok not too long ago. What a load of shite that is. I mean, if you want to see weird people doing fucked up things, that is the place to be. I thought Pornhub was, but no, TikTok, that's where you need to be. I watched a dude, he was, how do I put this politely? He was a big fat fatty. And he sat there with a plate full of salad. And he was picking up every individual bit and he was going, Brussels sprouts, lettuce, carrots. And I was like, why do you need to sit there, list it, and then take a bite of it? And I know it's because some weird troll on the internet is going to be like, yeah, I bet you didn't even take a bite of that carrot. <laughs> why does he need to prove it? There's nothing to prove. Just fucking eat the thing. And incidentally, if you're going to do a weight loss thing, why don't you just do it for yourself, man? Why does every resolution have to be done for everyone else by yourself? I have resolutions, but nobody knows what the fuck they are. So, the dating season's gone a little cold for me. Yeah, it's that time of the year. Unfortunately, the dating season has been cold for the past 28 fucking years. <laughs> when they said winter is coming, mine never fucking left. But it's fair. You know, it's, it's Christmas time. I get it. You know, the... You know the type of girl that gets the trophy boyfriend for the pictures on Instagram, so we'll, we'll disregard them entirely. But uh, yeah, you'd think there'd be more luck out there, but no. I, uh, I contacted a couple of friends of mine who were uh, uh, of the female persuasion, and I said to them, you know, this is tough, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to match with people and stuff, and it's just, it's just not working. And I explained to them that on Tinder, there's a little section where you can see how many people like you. And mine was on about 42 or something like that. The person I spoke to on the other end of the phone went, oh, oh I didn't know it goes under 100. The injustice. <laughs> it's just not the same game for guys and girls, man. It's just not the same game. I had, um, I had a friend. No, I'm not going no, to tell that story. I'm not going to tell that story. It's not fair on that. So, um, <laughs> but it's a good one. Maybe I will. I'll get permission and I'll come back and tell it. So, uh, yeah, I, um, the other night I was, uh, 
uh, trying to keep up with my resolutions and finding it quite difficult. So I thought, you know what, I'll jump onto some dating sites, just a standard, you know, Tinder, Hinge, that sort of thing. And I was swiping through, just, you know, playing it properly, not just swiping for the sake of swiping. I was trying to take my time over it. And eventually it got to the point where both applications told me that I'd run out of likes. That's literally like a dating site saying to you, listen, dude, we, we've given you a chance. I mean, if you can't find anyone to match with, with the likes we've given you, I don't think we can help you at all. Have you ever tried changing your personality and or face? <laughs> Maybe come back when you're a bit more or better looking. <laughs> uh, and then of course the problem is some, um, because I, you know, I'm not going to sit here with the whole woe is me. I do get some likes and some things on the other end. For example, Hinge does a great one where they will tell you who likes you. So you can check them out. It's not just a matter of chance. And uh, listen, I don't think I'm bad looking. <laughs> but, but the people that like me. Oh, how do I put it nicely? I, as, you, as you can maybe see from the pictures, I, uh, you know, five foot eight, I weigh about 11 and a half stone. It's all in proportion, but I'm not, I'm not a big beefy fella. However, some of the women that I match with, I don't know how it would work in the bedroom. I, I, I imagine me actually trying to have intercourse with some of the women that like me would be closer akin to me trying to climb Kilimanjaro. Honestly, I... <laughs> you know when you're a kid and you try and cover up all your vegetables by stacking it in the mashed potato and it just gives you like twice the size of mash? Yeah, and then your mother tells you you've got to continue to eat it until it's finished. Well, uh, mm, there's a comparison in there somewhere, but I'll let you make it. <laughs> so yeah, dating sites aren't going so well, but uh, you know, winter, winter, it's come and it's stayed here for a little while. So we'll we'll see how the summer goes, huh? We'll see how the summer goes. He's just looking for love. <laughs> uh uh, oh, actually, I tell you what I did do. I jumped onto uh, a friend's Tinder just to, just to see what the opposite sex was like. Holy shit. And I thought women's Tinders were, were predictable. You know, you got the classics, the pouting, the arse sticking out, the tits on show. It's all the same stuff. And then I find out that every other guy has got a fucking gym selfie. I'm not going to go into it. If you want to hear my opinions on gym selfies, just watch the previous episode. I'm fairly certain I covered that to great extent. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I, I just, I can't bear to do it. The narcissism of uploading a shirtless picture of myself and having that be the thing that advertises me. I mean, jeez, I can't. Oh, that's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot. You've got to have some bollocks to do that. And uh, although I consider myself to be a confident person, I am not going to put myself out for that sort of criticism. <laughs> It's just not possible, man. I can't do it. I'm dying for things to be reopened again. I just want to get into a comedy club, man. I want to do some more sets. I miss it. I miss it so bad. You would think that with a podcast, I'd actually be writing routines and, you know, practicing them. However, I literally just turn on the microphone and start fucking talking. Why not? It's my podcast. I can do whatever the fuck I like. <laughs> Like I said in episode one, the aim is to get one laugh or one smile out of you. And if that works, success. And if it doesn't, then I shall try my absolute hardest to make it happen. Yeah, dating is difficult at the best of times. Even when I do get a match and I get to the stage where I'm lucky enough to get their phone number, I'll give them a call and it's like, I am very aware that I have the voice of a 64-year-old man and the body of a 16-year-old <laughs> <laughs> you pick, they pick up the phone and you know call up and they'll be like ah uh, hi is that is that mark why yes it is and who might hello hello legitimately that is a conversation that happened <laughs> straight hung up <laughs> they must have been convinced that i was catfishing them either that or this woman is the best at rejection she couldn't be better at rejecting people if she worked at the u.s fucking border patrol hi oh oh topical <laughs> from about four years ago. Oh, I just threw rum down my fucking shirt. That was clever. It's difficult, man. It's difficult because, you know, I I, I appreciate that my body doesn't reflect my voice. So uh, I, can only, I can only imagine when I meet up with people for the first time, the disappointment they must see <laughs> as I step out of the car. Oh, oh this is going to be a long afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> we would just get grabbing a coffee, right? We don't actually need to go see the film. Sure, okay, great. In fact, no, let's go see the film. It'll be nice and dark, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, dating's always a fun one, isn't it? It's always difficult because you never know what to do or what to say. 
and you know, as of about two years ago, I'd only ever been on one actual date before then. And I think we went to the pub or something and I did not stop fucking talking to this poor woman. I just talked to her and talked to her. She must have been sat there like, uh, you know, I I'm doing well too. Thanks. <laughs> and I never got a second date. <laughs> Who would have thought? A catch like me just going on and on and on about nothing. I'd be like, oh, what do you think of Die Hard? Is it a Christmas film? Or oh, is that a Jaffa cake? <laughs> Somebody actually said to me, they were like, uh, so you know that a Jaffa cake actually is a cake because uh, when it gets dry, it uh, turns chewy rather than soft like a biscuit? I said, yeah. And they're called Jaffa cakes. Clue was in the fucking name. Why is it even a discussion? I think it's when boring people don't have anything to say, they just have to kind of fall on the old cliches of what they thought was interesting back in 1988. Jaffa cakes even around in 1988? Maybe. So a lot of my friends are having children. Um, I don't think it's despite me. I think this is something they've chose to do. But um, either way, they're having a lot of kids, and it's made me think about uh, about you know fatherhood. And you know, down the line, it's it's an idea. It's always something you got to think about. It also made me think about my dad. And my dad is so old school. Old school teaching habits. You know, in terms of like reheating food. I'd got to dad, and I'd be like, Dad, I, how do I know if this is cooked or not? It's been in the microwave for twenty minutes. I mean. what... <laughs> 20 minutes. It's been in the microwave. I don't know if it's cooked or not. Well, stick your finger in the middle. What happens? So I stick my finger in. Ah, shit! It burns! There you go, then. It's cooked. Cooked food, burnt fingers. Life lesson. And you walk off with that swagger. Like, yep, there you go. Cooked food burns your finger. Life isn't fair. The government's rigged. And Brexit was an inside job. All right, I'm out of here. Take it easy. He would do all of those little things in that sort of like... Uh, that sort of swagger of just like, yeah, life ain't easy. That's how I fucking learn. That's how you're going to fucking learn. Meanwhile, I'm picking off pieces of lasagna and skin looking like the last scene from fucking Terminator. <laughs> oh, actually, it reminded me of another time where I was hit in the balls with a stray basketball. Uh, I was playing outside my back garden, shooting some hoops. The ball had a nasty bounce, hit me in the testicles. I come running in. I'm like, dad, 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 my, my balls, they hurt so much. He goes, what happened? Oh, the basketball, it hit me and it really hurts. It's getting worse. Okay, no worries. Just relax. Now, star jumps. Do some star jumps. What? What do you mean? What do you mean star? Do some star jumps quickly. It's, gonna, it's not going to work. Okay. Ah, ah, oh, ow. I look up to find my dad is filming me. And we're not talking a camera phone. This was back in the early 2000s. He had to pull out a fucking handheld massive camera. <laughs> just to see me <laughs> struggling with my testicles on fire. Doing fucking star jumps. What is he going to be like next? I will fall off my bike. Dad, I think I've broken my arm. Oh, quick, press ups. Press ups. <laughs> you need at least 20 press ups. Otherwise, it's not going to fix. To be fair, though, my dad's a very literal thinker. You know, those simple life lessons is the fire hot. Well, you know, let's set fire to your shirt, see if you've got a sweat on. There's your answer. Um, <laughs> you've got to learn things the hard way. I'd be sat on an aeroplane going, Dad, why is there frost on the outside of the glass? I don't want you to stick your head out and find out. Come on, we'll do it together. No, 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 you first. I'm just going to quickly turn on my phone. How'd you get the camera to work again, love? <laughs> it's just the way he is, man. It's just that salt of the earth working class. You figure it out by yourself. All right, I think that's more than enough rambling for one little podcast. I swear at some point I am actually going to get an agenda to this as opposed to just turning on a microphone and then just fucking talking. But uh, until I figure out what that is, I'm going to continue to do this because it brings me joy. Anyway, Happy New Year to you all. 2021, let's get this going. Let's do it right. COVID is still a thing. We have to acknowledge that. But if our attitude changes and we do well for one another, then we can only move forward together. All right. Until the next one, adios.